Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm gonna play this video and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and are done wrong. Here we go. I'm Assistant Chief Wyatt Martin of the Houston Police Department. This critical incident briefing is intended to provide you with information about a death in custody that occurred in Houston on December 22nd, 2022. You're about to see video footage that is related to this incident. HPD conducts thorough investigations into deaths in custody. These typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. It is important to note that we are in the very early stages of the investigation, and we continue to review additional evidence as it is collected and analyzed. The videos you're about to see can be graphic and may be difficult to watch. These videos may also contain strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. On December 22, 2022, Houston police officers were providing support to Houston Fire Department arson investigators as they served a felony warrant at a high-rise apartment building at 909 Texas Avenue. Arson investigators are HFD personnel and are not assigned body-worn cameras. The suspect, Eolis Whitaker, refused to open the door to his apartment on the 17th floor. While officers were preparing to make entry into the apartment, they received reports from other HFD units arriving at the location regarding a male climbing out a window who had fallen several stories. That man, identified as Eolis Whitaker, was pronounced deceased at the scene. Mr. Whitaker, come to the door. We have a warrant. Chief, no. Mr. Whitaker! Mr. Whitaker, you have five seconds to come to the door. Houston Police, we're coming in. Coming in! All right. Get ready, guys. This key's not working. This one fits, but it's not turning. It's turning. It's locked. He's in front. Hey, I'm in front. What are we going to do? Are we going to bust it? He's inside. Yeah. He can get a canine out he's here, but he's still going to have to race the door. Do you all have the... Yeah, they got them. They're bringing them. He's working. Oh, okay. So, eight is right down the street. Or nines. We'll be here quick. All right. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Whitaker, this is what's going to happen. We're going to break your door down to run this warrant. We know you're inside, and then we're going to send in the dog. Do we really need to do all that? Please just come to the door. No? Possible person that wants to jump out of the 18th floor. Here? Yeah, so it might be this guy. Either it's a distraction or is it or this, this guy that might be off by one? Well, I don't know. Yeah, they're probably off by one. I hope he's not one to... I mean, he's only got a warrant, right? And it's just right. for setting a fire? Yeah. There's no need for any of that. We got units over there? Uh, they just got the EMS registered. Just showed up right now. That's the reason why we're here is that they got a call for that 18th floor. Yeah. Have, have, have a cow, call cow, and tell him to go around. What street is he facing? We're calling Texas. We're calling dispatch right now. Yeah. And we're seeing if the number that we have for him is the number that. Dispatch, we're calling Texas. We're calling dispatch right now. And we're seeing if the number that we have for him is the number that. Okay. So 
if we cooperate that. Yeah. Each and every. Have Carol walk around and see if there's a sign. He saw a picture of him. He knows what he looks like. What's he wearing? Oh, Chief Disney, a guy jumped out the window, DOA. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Hey, please. Are you sure everybody's going to all walk down? We're going to wait until. Let's find out. Well, Chief Disney, a guy jumped out the window, DOA. All right. I don't that's him. 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 Let me know what you have. I said, okay, we're busting up guard on. He said, okay, let me know what you have. All right, that's, 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 that's up to y'all. Fire mode here. Hold on, hold on. Come on, man. Come on, here. This is uh, their warrant, their police officers. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Ready? No, wait, wait, where's the little button? I got it. All right. You got it in place? I got it in place. Yeah, he's jumped. Apparently. That's it. You got it. That's it. Hey, please open up. Flashlight. 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 You want a flashlight? Yeah. Flashlight, anyone? Like, all right. <clears throat> so I'll pause it right here. Um, all fighting guns need to have weapon-mounted lights. All fighting guns need to have weapon mounted lights and you need to have a flashlight on you the flashlight is for searching navigating signaling etc and it is also to be used as a backup to your weapon mounted light in the event there's a failure with that weapon mounted light so he should have a flashlight on him. Unfortunately, he does not. And that's not something that is peculiar in a lot of places. There's lots of cops in these uh, detective roles or these administrative roles who only carry a gun. If they even carry a gun. Or the ones who do carry a gun, most of them will carry just a gun. They won't have a weapon-minded light on it. They won't have a flashlight in their pocket. Um, it's it's poor mindset. Poor fighting mindset. If you know you're going to go serve a fucking warrant, bring a fighting gun. And that fighting gun needs to have a weapon-minded light on it. So this guy showed up ill-prepared. Um, it's also not uncommon in some areas to see firefighters, uh, some firefighters, not all of them, but to see some firefighters be sworn peace officers. And that's usually from the arson investigation side of things. Um, because arson is such a, I guess, unique kind of crime that involves just fire, obviously. Uh, it is something that... Uh, people with a lot of background in fire science can actually excel at as a detective uh, or someone investigating it. And when it's a crime, it's best when you have a peace officer collect evidence and, and do all that stuff. So in a lot of places uh, where there's an arson investigator, um, there's been things done, either laws were tweaked, amended, whatever. Um, but the arson investigator in a lot of places is actually a sworn peace officer. They don't go out uh, doing patrol shit. They don't fucking pull over cars for license plates not illuminated, none of that bullshit. That's solely all they focus on is the arson uh, related kind of stuff. Um, there are some state police agencies that will have arson investigators. Um, that's something that they specialize in. Um, and they can go around to other parts of the state, 
um, to do this evidence collection and whatnot, um, whereas each uh, region that that state police entity covers may not have their own arson investigators. So there may be, you know, just a handful of arson investigators for the state police, and they'll go all over the state doing these things. Because it's something that doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, you need people trained in it. Um, and it's best when you have law enforcement doing it. That way you can have chain of custody preserved, etc. And it holds up better in court. So these HPD officers are backing away and they're saying that the uh, Houston Fire Department arson police need to be taking the lead on busting this door down and going in. But old dude don't have a light to be able to go in and fulfill his duties. So, failure on his part. I got the blur box over him, so you can't see much of anything. But it looks like, all right, I guess this is the side of the building that he fell from. This camera, I'm sure it had to pick something up. They're just obviously not showing it. This looks like his feet, so his head's facing that way. If you look at this, it's around this, I guess, HVAC stuff. Looks like he hit this, um, tore it down, and this is where he landed. Uh, 18 floors up. I mean, not going to survive 18 floors. Um, don't know the circumstances other than he was accused of setting fire to something and they were serving a warrant for him. What he set on fire, I have no idea. Um, did he jump just to die? I don't know. It could be that he thought he could go out of the window, crawl around on the ledge, and come escape out that way. Like they would come in and see the apartment was empty, think he wasn't there, and then he'd slip right back in. That's plausible. He could have been thinking that. And then he could have been, you know, out in the window and a big gust of wind came and then shoo, he falls. Who knows? Uh, this is one of those things where you just, you won't ever really fully know exactly what this person's intentions were. Because they're not going to be able to tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> So that's it. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.